Three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable, we got the usual suspects. We got the t- nightcap monster, dude buddy, the nightcap OG. Scott Boston, how are you? Great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. Good to see you. You too. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. Recovering from boot camp. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I, I slept all day. I, I feel good. And then we've got the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Ah. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark, and I'm actually dressed in your honor, in the honor of your love of country music, as I recently found out. I got my Marlboro Man jacket, my Peterbilt hat, and uh, just loving it. No, hey, look, I appreciate it. I really do. And um, I, I know there's a country western joke in there somewhere, but I just don't have it right now because I got to introduce, you know, we love him, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. You're not automating your Craigslist, your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash land geek. And of course, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I do have a question for you. Great. And I'll answer it with a country twang. What is your favorite country music group? (laughs) That is an excellent question that I have not thought about. (laughs) But I would say that because Mike Zeno uh like i think a year ago on the podcast was talking about johnny cash does johnny cash count i mean technically he's a country music star yeah yeah okay yeah okay well i mean that's good i i the thing is like it's not that i don't like country music you know what it is it's the same thing with mexican food for me i love mexican food i just prefer thai and chinese and japanese and french and whatever but it's not like i don't i wouldn't eat it it's not like I wouldn't listen to it. I just don't think about it that like that. You just don't, you're not a consumer of it. But you're not a consumer of it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but there's some great country music out there now. Yeah. For sure. Has been for years, decades, maybe. Fastest growing uh, genre. That and, country, that right? and NASCAR, man. I don't know if NASCAR is still fastest growing anymore. I don't know. Anyways, um, I do want to <laughs> just mention that. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. In 16 weeks, we're going to take you up that land investing mountain quickly, efficiently, and safely. Just like if you were going to climb Mount Everest, would you go alone or would you want to go with a Sherpa who's been there and done there and done that a thousand times? That's what Flight School is about. Learn more at landgeek.com forward slash training. So boot camp in Phoenix was amazing, wasn't it? Just real quickly, Mike Zana, what was like your biggest sort of you know, takeaway from boot camp. This, yeah, it was amazing, and you know, I just can't uh, get over how many you know just in, incredible people we have in that community. I know we say it over and over again; it sounds redundant, but the fact that uh, you know the couples that are in there, they're there, the people that are partnering together, people and families with fathers and sons. I, I and I had people came up to me and said, you know, this is incredible to see that. You know that that this is a business that you can work with someone that. Uh, that you love, like like your, uh, you can work with your father, you can work with your brother, you can work with your husband, your wife, and um, it is. It's this can bring people closer as they struggle together to develop the passive income and literally change their lives. So to to see all those people together, hear uh, the stories of people who are in coaching, the couples that are in coaching, and how they're crushing it, and how that's impacted the lives. People that have left their jobs, and I mean, this is real world stuff. This is this is this is amazing, and you see it in person. I, I can't help but be blown away by it every time. No, I, yeah, I, hundred percent, I agree. How about you, Mimi? Boy, I don't know how I can second that. I, I loved meeting all the people that I see on the flight school office hours and my coaching students, right? I meet them every week, every other week on Zoom. It's actually meet them face to face and spend some time getting to know them. I absolutely hear more about their stories. I absolutely love that. No, 100%. Uh, How about you, uh, dude, buddy? Uh, To echo on what Mike said a little bit, uh, what I love is hearing from people how different their life is today compared to a year ago. And there are a lot of people in that room. 
when when they when they look at it, when they analyze where they were a year ago, Tyler and Jen Kelly had done one deal. Now they've done eighty. I mean, that's insane. Uh, and and just a lot of stories like that. Now, you know, some journeys take longer than others, but really, I mean, you look back two years, where were you? And I just love hearing those uh, those comparison stories from people where they were. And then, uh, you know, uh, I think, I think that really motivates people to take action and ask themselves, okay, where can I be a year from now if I just start this journey? So I love that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's emotional. It's amazing. Um, I got teary hearing, hearing some stories. I always get teary hearing Mimi's story. Uh, I, yeah, I love when she tells a problem for me too. I got a <laughs> <laughs> But it's great. It's great. Um, Scott Todd, how about you? You know, Mark, it's uh it's funny because when one of the, the key parts of boot camp and we have it twice is grill the geeks, right? And so you see the the VIPs or the coaching students go up there where the where the people that are attending boot camp for the first or second time. They can go up there. They can ask questions of the geeks. I mean, it's a pretty open forum, I think. And it's, it's fun for me because I stand in the back of the room and uh, kind of listen to this. And I think about where everybody started. You know, everybody started really going through flight school. And so I'm able to, to, to watch their progress. I'm able to see, like, you know, uh, the, the land duo get up there and talk about their 80 deals. And uh, Tyler talking about how he, he left his job. And, and I get to think back. Like, man, I remember their, their piece there. I remember like some of their original questions and I remember taking them down that journey or Mimi's story. I remember like doing Mimi's uh, strategic planning with her. And I, you were in the back of me at one point and I, and I leaned over to you and I said, it's like, it's like watching our children grow, but yet it happens faster than our own children, right? Like you can stand in the back of the room and, and know that we had an impact in someone's lives in some way. And it's pretty cool to think about, you know, just these little touches that we can go through. You know, it, it basically always makes me feel good that at the end of the day, I accomplished something, like not just for myself, but for other people. And it's always exciting to, to hear other people's stories and see their success. Yeah, I, I have to say, I like, I, I have to just, everything you guys said is exactly how I feel. Um, but I think for me, the most special thing is seeing how the community comes together on Friday and evolves to this one cohesive unit on Sunday. And, you know, people are just like those, you just see how those relationships um, come together because how often in life do we get to be in a place in time where we're all have the same sort of objective, if you will the same values. We all have, there's an easy conversation starter. How long have you been doing the land business? And just talking about it and being helpful in this abundance mentality, it's incredible. And then just some of the conversations I have off topic, um, literally it can be life-changing just for me. Like Joseph Abusi at the networking hour, whom by the way, I'm adopting as my second father. Uh, he was there with his son. His, his son doesn't know it, but I just literally adopted him. He, he gave me this document because I was asking him, he's been married, I, I want to, hopefully I don't butcher this, but 42 years. And so I asked him, I said, Joseph, what's the secret? And oftentimes people will just give me, a, you know, a one word, two word answers like, you know, like uh, don't go to bed angry or uh, compromise or something like that. The, Joseph sent me a document of his 10 rules and they were so wise. And I, I showed him my wife and she's like, oh my gosh. I mean, that's, it was just incredible. Like it was transformative for me in just all my relationships. So those are the things that, that happen at boot camp. In a long winded way, it's, I have to say, if you've never been to a boot camp, you won't know what we're really talking about until you experience it. So the next one is a San Antonio, January 10th through 12th. Uh, learn more, just go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp, but is really, really a special weekend. All right. At bootcamp, um, we had a very interesting question and we thought, you know, this is a great round table topic. And the question was, I'm going to read it. Um, is it bad etiquette 
to ask another investor what county you're working in. And what's interesting is that the person who asked this came from Alabama and like with the sweetest Southern accent. He's like, is this bad etiquette? And you're almost like, well, almost, you could just curse us out. We wouldn't feel badly about it with, with that Southern accent. But anyways, um, let's start with you, Scott Bossman. Is it bad etiquette initially to just start asking another land investor, what counties do you work in? That's a great question. I have kind of mixed feelings about this. Like when people ask me this, I get this little tingle on the back of my neck, like, why should I tell you where I'm working? <laughs> but, um, but then I think the market's so massive that it probably doesn't matter. Uh, the information is out there. I mean, they're going to be able to Google my name and see where I'm working. Um, I think uh, for some people, it's curiosity. For other people, they want a quick answer, uh, like a quick solution on, you know, where should I go work? But I caution you to do that because the land that I like may not be the land that you like. So you just need to do your own county research. You need to go out there. And uh, I mean, that's part of the process, right? Part of the process of becoming a land investor is feeling the pain of county research and feeling the pain of finding the right area for you. So, um, I guess that's my viewpoint on it. I think the information is out there. Uh, you know, spend some time on the on the interwebs and and see what you find. Yeah, uh, I I really like that answer, um, and I can I could sense the ambivalence with it as well. But I think ultimately, you're not serving the person to the best of their ability if you, as the coach, just give them the counties that you're working in. I agree. Now, if you're not a coach and um, you're sharing the counties you're working in, in a way you're, again, not necessarily serving that person because you went through the hard work of county research. They should probably go through it as well. But I'd be curious, Mimi Schmidt, what your thoughts are. Is it bad etiquette just to kind of come up and just you know, ostensibly ask, Hey, what counties are you working in? Uh, yeah, I think it's bad etiquette. And I, th I think there's a, just a line in general. We're all so helpful with one another, but there is a line. Like, um, it's not just what counties, like, what's your autoresponder series look like? What's your deal of the week look like? You know, um, why don't you take me inside in, into some of your stuff? Show me your zaps. Show me your zaps. So I, so I know how to do them. Some of those... <laughs> Everyone has to go through the pain themselves to learn how to do this business. Um, you know, I see a lot of people waste a lot of money on mailings because they just go into a county with something someone told them, but they haven't actually done the research, right? And so some of the pain you have to go through in, in building your business so that you can stay in it in the long term. But, uh, and two, you don't want to take advantage of other people's helpful nature. They, you know, there's so many things I'm willing to help people with and, uh, to teach them, but yeah, there are some things that, that my business strategy, where I feel like I've got some, um, you know, competitive advantage built around some of the things I've done that I, yeah, I don't, I don't think that I should share. Okay, I, I, I like that answer. And what would you say to the counter argument, Mimi? Oh, then I guess you guys don't really have abundance mentality. Oh, I think that I share so many things, right? I, I took some students in my CRM this weekend. Huh, I'm pretty open. Um, I share all the tools that I use. I tell people exactly how I automate, right? When I, my Ring Central emails go, there's a rule in Outlook that goes right, that moves the, the information right into Trello. I'm very open. Usually if people want to, uh, ask me about a whole lot of things. I just think there's a line. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think what's the abundance mentality is the fact that we're holding the boot camp. We're teaching them everything that we we're actually have these programs and you so like there's so much free information that we even give, but there is that sort of line of well what counties are you specifically Mimi Schmidt, Scott Boss, and Mike Zeno working. But Mike might be different. Let's ask the Zen master who's pretty calm. 
Someone actually said that to me at the camp. Well, you seem a lot calmer than I think you would be. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but I think, Mark, uh, <clears throat> there's a way you could approach that question with somebody. I think if someone, if you don't know anybody, you run into them, and I'm like, hey, hey, John, what county are you working in? Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> offensive. It's like saying, how much money do you make? Like, people don't really <laughs> respond well to those questions. Uh, but if you were to come up to someone, develop a conversation and say, hey, you know, I found that the counties I'm working in, and this is the county, this county, this county, um, I like this about them. I don't like, you know, I, I know, you know, you can approach the way someone might be open to sharing. You know, there's, there's that whole idea of being someone who takes and doesn't give, right? You want to be kind of someone who can do both. But I do, I, I think it's, um, hope I'm not going to steal your ranch because it's like based upon, you always say what you should have asked, right? Well, what is a good county? How do you find a good county? That's the real question they're asking. They're like, okay, you seem like a successful individual. Where are you working? Because I want to be successful. Well, I could tell you my CRM. I could tell you where I'm working. I could tell you all these things and it's not going to make you a successful land investor. It's the execution that makes you a successful land investor. And that's why we created flight school. That's the exact reason we we created flight school is because we put out all this information. You put out the secret county list in the toolkit. You put all this stuff out there and still people get tripped up with paralysis by over analysis. So uh, in the end is really not going to matter. I think if you tell people, because of those, if someone's really worried about those type of questions in the beginning, that means they're really new and they're trying to like kind of dive in of what's the best way to approach this. And I think that that's the wrong question. It's like, how do I learn to educate myself on good areas? How do I learn to, to take massive action? How do I execute? And, uh, and we have that, right? That's why flight school exists. So you can remove all the doubt and just execute. So I think it's a wrong question. I think it is bad etiquette if you go up to someone you just met him. Hey, what's going on? What county are you work in? Right? It's like, oh, whoa, whoa. Right. Yeah, it, it, it would, yeah, it would, it would take you back. It, it'd be like if we were eating dinner and someone just said, hey, can I have your fish? Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> go, go, go to the restaurant and order the fish. You know, we worked really hard to, to to figure out how to get this fish. Experience that a lot, actually. Do you see? Exactly. The kibba. <laughs> the rock kibbe. Is it kibbe or kibba? Well, the abuses, they're awesome. There's another way they refer to it. I would butcher it if I tried to say it. All I know is I want to try that recipe. Okay. Done and done. Um, Scott Todd, how about you? Hey, Scott. Nice to meet you. What kind are you working in? <laughs> That's a great question. What kinds do you work in? <laughs> you I know mark started. it's uh what's interesting about that question is i think uh i don't think that it's easy to, it's easy for someone to kind of get offended by that question because like everybody said it's like asking for like how much you make or whatever or can i have your fish and i do agree <laughs> with mike that it's probably the the wrong phrasing of the question i think the right question might be you know hey what you what what makes it a good county you know your number like think think through the question a little bit further like Hey, your largest county or your best county, what, what is it that, that you like about it, right? Like that's something that is going to teach you more on how to fish because what may be my favorite county today or the county I'm working in tomorrow today may not be the same one tomorrow. So I could tell you a county like, Hey, I work in this county, but then I could be like getting ready to dump out everything out of that county because I don't like it anymore, right? Like, you know, I, I wouldn't do that, but that's like the old pump and dump things from stock, right? Like you ask, someone goes out there and like, hey, I'm buying this company or I'm buying this stock. And the next thing you know, of people of influence, makes you know, everybody's buying that, that property or that, that type of company or stock. And then everybody, they're dumping it. They're making their money moving on to the next victim. And I do think that there's an element that I think a lot of people miss sometimes in the land business and that is, is that sometimes it behooves you to have some strategic knowledge base that's, that's kind of um, for your company only, right? Like we all can't be the same thing. And even though we are all different, we, we need to put our own personality. We need to, like Scott said, Scott Bosman, he said, Find your own property, one that speaks to you, one kind that speaks to you, because what I'm doing may not speak to you. Be you and find properties or counties that you like to work in um, so, that, so that you can create the company that's 
unique to you. And, and you can hold that as your strategic advantage too, or your competitive advantage over me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and really, when you get into it, the only way to learn anything is to do it. I could write up tomorrow, walking you exactly through my 10 favorite counties, why I love these counties, you know, the, you know, in-depth county research at the end of the day, that specific knowledge that I've acquired will not translate for you until you start doing it, until you start sending out offers and getting real response, response rates and talking to those sellers, because this is a market. Because in one point in time, that book stopped and now it's different. And then, so you have to be working these markets, talking to people, what worked today may not work yesterday, but the basic fundamental principles are still there. And that's really the critical element of it is, you know, what makes a good county? You know, why are the land investors doing deals here? How are they pricing? How are they changing their pricing as the market changes? What are their response rates? And at what point do they go then to the second county? Is my data good? Am I getting a good list? Maybe I'm not even getting a good list. If I went to agentpro247.com because I read on a blog that this is where this investor gets his lists. Well, okay, but it may not work today. That blog post could have been written two years ago. So you just have to do it to know definitively. Even in conversation, you're still not gonna get a really, really good answer until you do it. But ultimately, as a land investor, it does feel like bad etiquette. I think that's a long winded answer. Correct? Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, I thought this was a great topic. Um, I want to thank Ashley um, from bootcamp for asking it with her phenomenal Alabama accent. And, um, you know, spending time with her in, in chat was phenomenal, but I, she's the first one in, in years to actually even ask us the question. So just to have that sensitivity, that empathy, I thought showed a lot of, of wisdom from somebody you know, new in the room to even come up and ask. So thank you, Ashley, for doing that. All right, we're at that point now in the podcast where we get to put all of our attention on the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt, for her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable, for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before we go to Mimi, we got to give Alien to Augustine a shout out, don't we? Yes. How great is that rap? If you've not listened to the rap about looking over Tate's shoulder, first of all, there's a lot of teaching in it just in the rap alone, but it's amazing. It, it was, I get chills now just thinking about it. This is her third song. She's got the Land Geek song, the Nightcap song, and now Tate's Lots song. If you don't Wait. know what Lots is, just... Land you know. Moto. I got a Land Moto song, Land too. Moto. In Land Moto. Land Moto got its own song? Yeah. Or a jingle? Or jingle? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So, so phenomenal, so creative, so fun. And yet, we're learning something in it as well. It's educational. It, it, it's, it's, it, was, it was really great. Um, and Aileen came to boot camp as well. And uh, we, as a, you know, it's kind of cool to be in the room and be able to give her applause like that um, to do that. All right, Mimi Schmidt, what is your tip of the week? Never has Mimi wanted Eric on this podcast more. You can see it in her face. <laughs> uh, oh, I have a couple things I could do. Well, one of them that I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about, uh, Scott's always dogging me for using Trello. I learned that Trello integrates with Pipedrive. So for all you folks that my Trello followers that also use Pipedrive, you can connect them now. So you can send your information from Trello into Pipedrive. I think that was pretty cool. Via uh, the app or one of those super No, you don't uh, even have to use your box. You know, I'm always trying to stay at the 19 zap so I don't have to upgrade my plan. No, it's just, you right. just press a button. Just press a button. You just press a button? It's yeah. baked in? Yeah. 
It has its own integration with pipe drive. Wait a second. How does it integrate? It's baked into Trello with pipe drive. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. It has a bunch of different integrations, but pipe drive is one of them. So, um, it's just another thing that makes Trello so great. Right, Scott? <laughs> Which Scott? Me? Yes, you. You're always <laughs> oh, talking love... me about using Trello. <laughs> no, I love Trello for certain applications, but I think pipe drive is a good CRM. But it is. If it's you can great. combine the two. Yeah. Better. Great CRM. I don't use a Trello for my CRM either. So I have some yeah, no, yeah. I also have a website that I put out here in the chat, deedclaim.com, how to file a corrective deed. For those of you that misspell oh. and things like that. So check that out if you have a deed that you've done incorrectly and need a little help on what to do. Deedclaim.com forward slash corrective dash deed dash Scrivener's dash affidavit. We'll have a link to it. That's fantastic. Even a, a pescatarian like Mike Zeno. Pescatarian. Take advantage of that. The pa pescatarian? The I pescatalian. The yeah, I'm confused. I thought it was Tarian. Now, I think pescatalian sounds better. Yes. I think so. Well, because you're Italian. Yes. It, we're combining the whole fish thing with Italy. I love it. So, for those of us that don't know what that means, can you just define it? What pescatarian? What? No, pescatarian. I don't know if it's pescatalian. Is it pescatalian, Scott Bosman? <laughs> Pescatarian. He's messing with you, Mike. <laughs> Successfully. Anyway, I've been trying to eat a lot more fish and a lot less uh, other types of uh, chicken, beef, pork, and I'll have to. I have. I have to be honest. I feel great. I feel great. I've tried the all meat diet, Mark. You know, I've tried the all meat diet. I've had that. Had that experience. I tried the no food diet, which I know Scott Todd loves. Uh, but now I'm back on eating in moderation. Lots of fish. And I guess all right. the danger is that you could probably tell the temperature outside by looking at me because all the mercury. Well, I, I think that's another second great tip of the week is just eat more fish. Scott Todd? What, it, what, what do you mean the, the eat no food diet? What is that? I know because you always, every time I talk about intermittent fasting, you just like, no way. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, because I believe in eating like, you know, all, the grazing diet. Great, man. I can't be gifted, you know, certain body types. If I do that, I'm just going to. Well, I don't. Look, I, I eat breakfast, work. lunch, a snack, dinner, and a snack, and I'm, I'm golden, man. Mimi does the same thing. Keeps my metabolism going. Eat a little bit here all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, believe, I believe her snack, though, is a synonym for wine. It so. is. Wine, cheese, and crackers <laughs> is a daily snack for me, actually. Well, I want to I want to thank um, the listeners. Just remind you that the only way that we're going to get the coaches to keep coming back on the roundtable is if you give us, you know, a little love. Please subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at melanguage.com. We're going to send you the ninety seven dollar passive income launch kit along with the new wholetailing course, how to double your money thirty days or less. Um, Scott Boston, are we good? We are excellent. Mimi, are we good? Yep, great. Pescatalian, Mike Zeno, then Master, we good? Yeah, very good. <laughs> All right, the brain, Professor, Scott Todd? We're good, Mark. All right, again, learn more about flight school. We're filling up um, November very quickly. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Get on a call with the Pescatalian. Mike Zano and the Nightcap Meister OG, dude buddy, Scott Bossman. They will walk you through it. Are you ready to do this? One, two, three, let, let, let freedom, freedom ring. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's just not the same without Tate and Eric, is it? But Might be better. It was appropriately be. awkward, I thought. It was good. It was <laughs> good. <laughs> Is that the goal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I've got a, I've got a beef to pick with Zeno, by oh, the way, no. because every time it's boot camp, like it's first of all, it's like every ninety days, and he's got this whole new diet, and I always want to be like, oh, what's Mike doing? I, I want to do it. And now, like, I come home, like, honey, I think I'm gonna be a pescatarian. She's like, where'd you hear that from, Zeno? 
<laughs> and I'm like, no, I thought of it. <laughs> if you told you about that. Zano's doing so that already. It, you know, so I was, I was trying to do like the whole keto thing with this whole meat thing, right? That, you know, she's like, hey, let's, you know, we have dinner. She's like, do you want to try one of my French fries? And I'd be like, no. She's like, okay. Zano. <laughs> Zero, zero. I'm just and doing, then, <laughs> running experiments. And I, you know, I started the whole intermittent fasting thing with you, the yeah. cold shower thing with you. Yes. Hold she's your like, breath. Can you she's, yeah, she's like, yeah, basically, she's like, can you have an original thought? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not sure anymore because <laughs> of boot camp. Are you going to get a Marlboro um, jacket? I mean, that's probably where I draw the line. It's just the whole <laughs> country music. And I would have a tip Marlboro too. jacket. If you buy one of these things off of those online sites where somebody else is happy for it, I'm thinking you might want to wash it before you wear it. It's got a funky smell. Oh. I didn't realize. I threw it off. I'm so excited. Yeah, I threw it off for the for the. That's uh, a good show. idea. And I'm like, oh you, man, Mike, with your Peterbilt hat on, man, you you are looking the part. Hey, <laughs> is the fire truck Peterbilt? No. What's the engine of that thing? Well, KME is typically the brand we use. KME, but that that's the manufacturer, right? Yes. But like the engine is probably like a Cat or a Cummins engine. That's a great question, Scott. Go 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 yeah, check that out for me and uh, the, the, listen. Go check it out for me, and then we can come back to the next round table. You and I on this round table, we'll all talk about the Cat Caterpillar or. Are you gonna uh, wear a hat? I'll wear a hat, man. Like we can we can figure out which is the best engine, and uh, we'll see what Mark thinks. We well, obviously, Mark thinks the Mike thinks. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, uh, Mike, please just stick with something. It's, it'd be like, hey, everybody, I just got the Peloton. I love it. And this is what I'm doing. And then, you know, 90 days later, I got rid of the Peloton. I'm now I'm got a mirror and I love it. And I'm getting, you know, have you guys seen that mirror thing? Mirror.co? Like, it's like, oh, yeah, it's great. Personal trainer. It's kind of cool. It's geeky. But I'm not getting it because I have a freaking Peloton. Mike, stick with something. <laughs> need to lose Me. weight. And Mike, the signs of mercury poisoning are like twitching and <laughs> tingling and numbness in your fingers and uh, cognitive decline. So bleeding I'm, gums. I'm consistently inconsistent. Teeth falling out. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> like that. Consistently I like, inconsistent. I always like to be the spouse of someone with, that tries all these diets. Hey, you want to go do this? No, that's not on my diet. Hey, I'm going to make some. Oh, it's not on my diet. <laughs> I know what that's yeah. like. I, yeah. I don't know what to say. It's, it's not really relationship enhancing, Mike Zeno. <laughs> oh, it's, I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, I, th I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna add to Joseph Abusi's ten rules. The eleventh rule is stick to one diet. Yeah. Yeah. Will he actually? He, he, those? Yeah. Will he allow you to publish those rules? I should. I'll ask him because they're really great. I'll ask him. Yeah. Um, the impulsive side of me, we just wanted to do it. I'm like, nah, maybe I should ask him first. You know, that's the good etiquette we'll call it the ashley southern etiquette it's good all right so um well thanks everybody it's great reconnecting it's it's been it feels like days since we've seen each other <laughs> oh wait it has been How, how's the energy recovery over at, uh, the the bossman household uh, good. I, I tell you what, I slept in yesterday, took a power nap yesterday, didn't want to get out of bed today, but I did anyway. So that's good. So I'm getting there. That's good. Mimi, Recuping. how about you? Well, I got back a day early. So my, I just, my time's, time zone, I'm dealing with that time zone. I'm awake and sleeping. It's weird. Yeah, I napped in the, I fell asleep yesterday in the middle of the day. And then I was up in the middle of the night. So I got to get back on track. And would you mind telling me the name of the hotel for the 2020 San Antonio boot camp? Anybody know that? Anthony. Okay. It's the one that we were at last year. 
Uh, like a napkin. It's really nice. With the napkins, with the plane, the whole triangle. Oh, it's right there on the river walk. I loved it. The room was very um, chic. Okay. Yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Mike, how, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. You know, uh, that that all fish diet, I think it lends itself to recovery. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you froze there for a second. You just didn't want to say we, we did. We did. We did. Oh. Yeah, it could have been the mercury. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, how about you, Scott Todd? I'm good, man. I uh, I got back late or early Monday morning, and uh, first thing I had to do was change out the battery and the smoke alarm because it beeped for over 24 hours. Didn't work too well. But I'll tell you what, man. I, listen, you break out the ladder in like two o'clock in the morning and uh, you stop that chirping and you are the family hero. Let's just say like family hero mode and uh, got a couple hours sleep, got back up and changed out all of the batteries. Cause when one fails you, they all do, you know, and uh, you know, it's how I spent my recovery day, just changing out batteries in the morning and just relaxing the rest of the afternoon. Yeah. Do you want to be a billionaire? Cause I have an amazing idea. Uh, we could all do it. Well, you got to stop the call first because, you know, if we shared it now, we would just kind of like give away too much and, you know, we need to like keep it to all to ourselves. No way. Okay. This is the idea. We're going to do a Kickstarter campaign. So everyone hates the chirp. It is universal. Whenever that chirp starts going off, it is absolutely universal. So what if there was a chirp converter so you take the sound waves of the chirp and it converts it into it just a text on your phone or something that's more pleasant. Maybe the latest country music jingle or something. Just it's anything besides meant the chirp. to be chirp. annoying. Search, yeah. Anything besides the chirp, and then and then it just it like the it like the sound waves then kill the chirp, and you just have this warning on your phone change your batteries or the fire department will come in, you know, 48 hours and change them for you. How about well, I mean, something like that? What about just as, that's a great idea, but what about this fire, fire alarm companies? Put a button up there. You have a test button already. Put another button that says snooze and give me a couple days because you're going off in the middle of the night for Pete's sake. Go to sure every Minute. Yeah, idea. Technology that gets the battery at ten percent that texts you a week before. Yeah, that's yeah. Come on, Mike. In, in the call. In the call. One, the in last the call. one's okay, but the ones prior, uh, bad. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get it. If they could just tell me a week before. Heads I, up. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Like that chirp ever. Yeah, I mean, it had to be like your um, snooze. That's that's not that's. It's meant to annoy. It's just like the same reason, like when you. This is a good example. YouTube, no, it's not a good example. But anyway, this is good marketing. When they watch YouTube and they want you to sign up for the no commercials and you put on like a meditation soundtrack and that just as you sit back and you're ready to relax, like an ad comes on and you sit back, you just, ready, that's it, I'm signing up. Boom, YouTube premium. <laughs> so it's supposed to annoy you. So you'll do something. Okay, but can we make it so that it doesn't go off magically at like 11 p.m. for the first time ever? There should yeah. be a timeline. I mean, Yep. Like Mimi, I like you 10%. Yeah, I like I that. Mean, we need to, to, you know, go ahead, Scott. No, I was just a distance to empty, you know, things yeah. like in your car. Right. Yeah. Well, what about, what about if it just started flashing a red light, like a bright, like light, like, dude. I like that. You Two got like a before. day. Yes. You got a day before I die and um, I start annoying you. Because it only happens at nighttime. It only right. happens all the stores are closed. It's, right. It's no different than on our, on our firefighter packs, we have these low air alarms. It's similar. It means shortly you're going to run out of air. <laughs> you don't want to be like, change it to, hey, Mike, air's getting low. <laughs> you're going to die. Yeah, but, but at least die. you have an advanced you gotta notice. you got to go, yeah. all right, there's something wrong here. What's that noise? <laughs> yeah, but come on, Mike. Like, you do get, like... I hear what you're saying, man, but like <laughs> you can do something about it. You can't do anything at midnight if you don't have the batteries or like my wife's home alone. Or, you know, like it, it doesn't work that way. Fuel, just a little bit. Don't worry. 
The plane's low on fuel. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You could probably make it to the airport. Maybe. Let me tell you something. That is a real problem. That, like, that is a real problem because guess what? Planes don't have like, I've never seen one that has a low fuel light like your car. Hey, I'm low. In fact, one of my first lessons, the instructor made, made it well known that according to the FAA, the only time that you can trust the fuel gauge is when it's empty. Wow. So you know, Mark feels you, way that, comfortable that, now. That makes me want to be a pilot. <laughs> what do you do? It's like a dipstick pre-flight check? I mean, how do you know then? You have to physically sure it's full. check it. Yeah, you gotta you gotta go look, and then like you can check your gauges, and you go look. You put eyes on the fuel, but like for me, I have a I do have a a, um, a dipstick gauge that I'll use to know how many gallons I have, and then that that equates. You need to know how many gallons you're burning per hour on average, and then you need to like make sure that you don't run out. That's a oh, real man. problem, though. It's a real mathematics problem. Mathematics again. That sounds like math. You gotta have math, man. You got, and you gotta stay up with it too. Well, I, I do think the chirp is, I, I, I agree with you have to be annoyed, but not to the point where like I burned down several houses because I couldn't <laughs> stand the chirp in the middle of the night. Become an arsonist. Yeah, how I many mean, of you have just done that? Because smoke detector. Can't take it. I mean, can't take it. It drives you crazy. There's no other way. What well, is compli complicated by the fact if it's one of those, obviously you need a ladder. That means it's pretty high up. That complicates things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We actually rented a beach house where the ceilings were really high and literally at 2 a.m. it started chirping and it was a rental. There, it was, there was no ladder. Literally my son was scaling the wall and we would, we went to like three different stores in the middle of the night. They didn't have the nine volt battery. It's crazy. You know, so I guess, Moral of the story, travel. Five stars there. <laughs> no five stars for that B&B. &B. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a one star. <laughs> Seriously. Chirp. Darn chirp. All right. Well, this is always fun. Um, see you guys later. Thanks, everybody. See you.